Good morning. Good morning. Is everybody ready for some chili tonight? Yes. yes. Oh, man, I'm looking forward to that. I'm not going to eat anything all day. <laughs> I'm going to just gorge myself. Uh, we've got a list, a membership list out in the foyer. If you'd like to pick one up, all the active members here. So they're right out in the foyer. I, if I could, I'd like to get uh, Ron and Judy and our choir director up front and center here real quick, please. Chop, chop. Chop, chop. My name ain't on that list. Here. <laughs> we just like to say thank you for all you guys did for the church. We're very grateful. I know I am the congregation is. We've got a little something that we'd like to give to you all for our appreciation to you. Here it is. Choir director, yes. Thanks. Judy. And Ron. Thank you. December the 17th, we'll leave the church at about 10 o'clock in the morning. There's only about 10 on our list this year. It's narrowed down, so probably won't take real long, but we're going to have a lot of joy. We're going to spread some joy, and if you want to get your Christmas season on, there's no better way. Okay. Anything else? That's all I got.
Um, I do want to say one thank you to, where's Deborah Connor? Where is she? You know, there she is. Uh, you know, when the, when the Bible talks about patience and everything, uh, and realizing how much she has. Amen. Uh, you know, uh, as you look at your bulletin, bulletin today, how good it looks. Amen. Man, is this a chore for some reason. Uh, uh, but uh, she did a great job, and not, not just that, but even for the one tonight that we're going to be using. Uh, how many times did I call you or text you? Changing that, uh, uh, it got to the point where she, when she had answered, she goes, "What now?" You know, so or by text or whatever. Uh, I get back, "What now?" And, uh, thank you for all that you did there. And all that. Uh, there's a card that we have here that was sent to us, and I want to read that. To, uh, let's see, it's it's from. Uh, Betty Lou. Betty Lou, correct? Yeah. Uh, I hope your families are doing well. I've been under the weather for some for, uh, some months uh, uh, with my back. Can't stand for a long time or walk a, lo a long distance, but I am still blessed. Uh, I'm, not into, I'm not into a wheelchair or, or in a bed, so I guess I'm blessed. Please... Please place my yearly uh, gift to Lord's Acre. Lord's gift, the Lord's Acre's gift, yeah, gift where uh, uh, where it's needed and, and uh, tell and something about. And let's see, I'll try to get here. Please, uh, please, uh, please give my yearly Lord's Day Acre gift uh, where needed. Buddy and others uh, are uh, when, when Buddy and them are at the Lord's table for. Uh, for communion, would you please uh, like to know that we still? Wow, it's uh, it's it, you know what she did wrong. She put it in cursive. <laughs> you know, uh, uh, we we are still getting better. Uh, uh, I just want to thank you. Love you all in Christ, Betty. Right. Uh, and then she goes wishing each of you and your families. A blessed Thanksgiving, and I wish I could be there to share the wonderful dinner. Uh, no one does it better than Beth. You know? And uh, dear Betty Lou, could you print it? Nick? No. <laughs> no. Anyway. No, uh, no, the idea is that's Betty Lou Burris, Betty Burris, his wife, and she lives in North Carolina now. Every year she calls about Lord's Acre Day and sends her gift every year to Lord's Acre Day. She still considers herself a member here at Bethany. She's getting on up in years now, isn't she? Uh, She's getting on up in years Yes, yeah, she is. Yeah, she, yeah, she, yeah. That might be one reason you sent. <laughs> thank you, Mary. She's always thinking about it. Thank you, Mary. Yeah, that's the reason. She's getting up in years. And, uh, yeah, it, it was her handwriting. No. Uh, thank you, Mary. What a what a way to out. Yeah, uh, very good. All right. Uh, anything else uh, before we get praying here? Uh, I do want to. Uh, Bo spoke about the caroling. It is wonderful, you know, and it is a blessing. Each place we go to, and I know Mike and I visited Doris there a couple a couple weeks ago, and she's looking forward to it. And so, you know, if you get an opportunity to go or whatever, uh, can I give them the other part of it? Oh, the, sure. We stop at Wolf River Cafe. You know, gotta bait the hooks. Yeah, 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 yeah we gotta bait, yes. <laughs> and we gotta bait the hook, you know. We stop at Wolf River Cafe, and uh, I know I enjoy that part of it too, but uh, looking for, I'm looking forward to it. I hope you got my name there on there, because uh, it is. They don't have catfish, though. Excuse me? They don't have catfish, They will that day. It's Saturday, right? Saturday, Saturday morning. Saturday. Saturday. Saturdays, they're up, brother, and they're ready for us, too. And uh, What is that? Oh, I'm definitely uh, going on a rabbit trip here. Pickle. 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 It's wonderful. It's wonderful, isn't it? Yeah, and uh, what I like about it is, you know, when you order something to drink, even though it's Coke product, uh, it's like a two-liter, 
<laughs> wonderful, wonderful. Anyway, we better get to this before but, uh, the 17th, if you can make that. I'm, I promise you this, you will be blessed beyond measure. Amen. All right, so remember that. All right, any prayer requests? I, can, I know we mentioned that we have a few of those who are, are ill today. You look around, they're not here. Mm -hmm. What? Oh. I got a text this morning that Carrie Thronberry uh, passed away either last night. Or, uh, anyway, she's from an old family of Fishville and Eads area. Prayers for the family and friends. Um, did you say what time? What time? What? Yes, until 10, 10 o'clock. Yeah. And then, well, you have you supply the hats, right? Yes, I got I got the hats, and I still got the music. But and Rihanna was gonna redo that for the last four years, so maybe this year she redid it to where it'll be more user friendly. But okay. mine worked. That's all yeah, I'm gonna say. Works. All right. Anyone else? Uh, Michael spoke to Shelby this week, right, Mike? Uh, or last Sunday, but. Uh, he said it had to do with some of his medication his problems. And, uh, we're, we're going to keep an eye on him. We'll, we'll be able to watch him with him. But uh, maybe we can even pick him up. You know, if it's about driving, we'll pick him up and we'll get him here. So remember, remember Shelby. Judy Mitchell, I talked to her this week. She sounded like a different person. And Zig, she was going to try to be here this morning, but I see she's not. So she yeah. must. I don't know what happened, but she was on the upbeat this week, very, very different from the week before. Yeah. Yeah, she was concerning the week before that. Preacher. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. Vicky. A friend of mine, her husband has been battling bladder cancer for four or five years, and he's not doing it really well. Joey. Joey. Mercy. 
Yeah. Uh, just got a text from Rihanna. It says Hattie's on put Hattie on a prayer request. Hattie ended up with a double ear infection Tuesday, but then she got 105.6 temp Friday and Saturday. And the doctors can't tell what's wrong with her. It's not the ear infection because it's gotten better, but she just can't shake the illnesses. <clears throat> also, we need to remember uh, Sonny Guy and uh, uh, my mind just went blank. Martha. Martha. Boy, she get me for that one. Anyway, Martha, she's having a procedure in the morning. Well, Hattie was here Thursday morning. I noticed she was feeling a little, she was a little, yeah, she was a little, uh, you know, agitated or whatever. Whining, I guess. Even. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Is there somebody else? The Kias. Who? The Kias. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> So he, the last I heard, Dennis was positive again. I think. All right, let's do a little unspoken in that, and then we'll play. Is anyone else? Nancy, Steve, Preston, Chuck, Allie, Matt, Tilly, and Cullen. Father God, as we come this morning, we thank you for this December 4th, 2022. We thank you for all the blessings that come our way, even those that we don't sometimes even recognize. Lord, but we know that uh, you're there with us all the time. You're watching over us. Our prayer list is long. Uh, we a whole page here. And uh, this time of the year, those who are ill with uh, the flu or even the virus or ear infections, all these things seem to pop up this time of the year due the weather changes or whatever. But Lord, we ask that you be with all those who are usually here with us or part of our church family that are here that uh, are missing because of some illness going on in their life today. We, we ask that you help them come back to uh, their spot here on the church that they're truly missed. We ask that you help them to, uh, to get strong <coughs> physically and uh, well, we, we thank you for some good reports there. It is good about Judy Mitchell feeling better. And uh, also we, we pray that uh, uh, she will be back here with us. And her and Shelby, Lord, uh, we pray for him as struggling with some medical uh, medication issues. Be with him and we thank you for that. We have those who are, are struggling with some serious injuries or illnesses. Bo and Renee uh, gave us some and Buddy and, and uh, and we got one about Hattie and, and Martha and the Keos. All these, Lord, are, are, are things that are serious. And, Lord, and we, we take them to you in prayer. Help us to understand, Lord, that, uh, you know, you truly care for us there and those. And you're looking over those things. And we ask for quick healing in all those situations, Lord. But if it's not quick, we ask that you be with them, those who are the... the the healing is not quickly, Lord. Maybe it doesn't come at all. You know, with Vicky's request, maybe your friend doesn't. Uh, it doesn't come at all. But we still keep our faith and our hope in, uh, on you, Lord. And we just keep our eyes to you. Be with us, Lord, as we we pray these names. And even during the week, when we forget the names, you don't. And we ask, Lord, that you just be with our prayer requests from every Sunday and as they go, and uh, be with the families. And tonight. As we come back tonight, Lord, for our luminary service, that you be with those families. There'll be grief, there'll be tears and sadness, but also some, some tears of joy and some hope. Because Paul tells us this, that even though they go on before us, we comfort one another in knowing this, and no other religion in the whole world or the history ever can make this claim, but that of Christianity is that we will see them again. Amen. Job says this, I know my Redeemer lives and I shall stand before him. So he knew that there was life after death. So Lord, help us with those families and our own families whose loved ones have gone on before. That we have that hope and that assurance and that confidence is the way Paul puts it. That we know that we will see each other again. And 
it'd be a great family reunion. But the family reunion will be not just our own family members, but all those who have gone before us. Lord, again, we put our hand upon your prayer request, this prayer request, and we ask, Lord, that you answer all of them in a way that will bring comfort to those who are struggling and suffering. We thank you, Lord, and we show our thanks by reciting your prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Hallelujah. guide us in confession of our sins. We know that in the greatness of your love, you have promised to forgive us. Cleanse us as we prepare our lives for the coming of Jesus again. This we ask in his name. Amen. Amen.
morning, our scripture reading comes from 1 Timothy 1, 12 through 17. I give thanks to Christ Jesus, our Lord, who has strengthened me, because he considers me faithful, appointing me to his ministry. Even though I was formerly a blasphemer, a persecutor, and an arrogant man, but I received mercy because I acted out in ignorance and unbelief, and the grace of our Lord overflowed along with the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. The saying is trustworthy and deserving of full acceptance. Christ Jesus came to the world to save sinners, and I am the chief of them. But I received mercy from the, for this reason, so that in me, the worst of them, Christ Jesus might demonstrate his extraordinary patience and the example to those who would believe in him for eternal life. Now to the King, eternal, immortal, invisible, the only God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. Uh, you. The message is entitled, How Grace Changes Everything. Jesus breaks the power of sin and offers hope to all who trust him. Our lives are hopeless without God. We are born with a fleshly nature and we continue to sin throughout life. The penalty for sin is death and eternal separation from God. No one is exempt from this biblical truth and there's nothing that we can do to change the situation. Enter God's grace his unmerited favor for us. Consider the Apostle Paul who persecuted anyone claiming the name of Jesus. He played a significant role in the violence aimed at Christians and his own, in his own words was the chief of sinners. Nothing he did deserved God's tender concern. But God lovingly transformed him into a man who dedicated himself to sharing the gospel message Paul's life beautifully, beautifully illustrated grace. Salvation is possible only because of grace. We simply cannot do enough good deeds to earn our own way to heaven. One who, looked, who took the punishment of our sins deserves all credit for our redemption. <coughs> and thankfully, there is no transgressions too great for him to forgive. We can't add to his act of atonement. All we can do is receive this free gift. If we trust in Christ as Savior, God will save us, making us his children forever. Let us pray. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning. We come before this holy communion table to take these emblems and represent what Christ did for us that day on the cross. As we prepare to take this bread that represents his body, I pray that it be a means to strengthen us and help us each and every day to live out a life that would be pleasing to Jesus and his Son. Christ's name I pray. <laughs> Given thanks, he broke and said, This is my body which is given to you. Do this. Father, as we continue to gather around your table and give thanks this morning, we thank you for the sin of the represents the blood that was shed on that cross to cover our sins, not yours. Lord, we just thank you so much for the opportunity to stand. Taking this 
the same way he took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink.
last week when uh, Judy played Oh Holy Night, Gary said uh, he almost wanted to get up and say, everybody get chills. Could you give us a little of that again? Please. You, you guys don't mind me. <laughs> Well, I tell people we got the greatest piano player ever. Best I've ever heard. Truly believe that. Next week, you don't want to miss next Sunday. Next Sunday, the men are going to sing for you. If you are an elder or a deacon, you're going to come join me up there, and we're going to sing a couple songs. Just for you ladies, how that and the children? Uh, I, I don't know if you'll love it, but we'll do our best, won't we? And so next week, look forward to that. Uh, and so uh, now, uh, I, I, I want to blame Bo on this because he's tough on this. So Bo, you're going to get the blame, ready? Thank you. He said, maybe you shouldn't announce it because they won't show. <laughs> <laughs> I did say that. But he didn't say if it was the ladies or the men who went to show. <laughs> so either way, uh, next week, all right? Uh, I'm going to look at uh, what I'm going to do here in the next couple, this today, next few weeks, is preach on this Advent wreath here. Uh, Christ is our uh, Advent wreath, you know, and he's in there. So we're going to look at that. It represents hope, joy, I mean, hope, peace, joy, and love. And so we're going to be looking at those things. When I was uh, about your age, Cody and, and Evan, uh, we used to get this book called the Sears Robot Christmas Book. <laughs> You know, and, and so we would get that, and we would go through it every page, you know, and and uh, we would, it was our wish book. Remember, they used to call it 
the, the wish book. They send out yeah. the Amazon and Target ones, though. I'm sure. Oh, they still have that? Okay. Yeah. And yeah, Mary, you know, Sears catalog. Sears and, and, the and Western Auto had some of the, but all the stores, you know, they'd have. And man, we'd go through that and, and we would just, oh man, this is what I want, you know what I mean? And so and this is what I'd hope for. And so we're, we're always, you know, uh, when it comes to things like that, we all have something we're hoping for, you know, or, you know, or something to happen that we hope will happen or hope that we can buy or even hopes, maybe something we, we hope we can get through, you know, at those times. But there's always that hope, and hope is one of those things where that you, uh, you know, you just hold on to that, don't you? You know, and you just, uh, I hope for that, that Red Ryder BB gun, you know, from the movie <laughs> Christmas Story, you know, or whatever it is you were hoping for. And what an amazing thing if you ever got it. You know what I mean? Those kind of things. Uh, my father loved Christmas. He just loved everything about it. And, uh, you know, he, he'd be one of the first ones to decorate and, you know, he was into it. And he loved hiding gifts, you know, even on Christmas Day. So, you know, we'd think we were disappointed, but then he'd bring up those, you know, and I always, that's the memories I have of him. But that Christmas hope we'd have. And, and so last week we talked about you know, the world, you know, preparing for, for the Messiah to come and not knowing how, but yet that was their hope. And in, in the book of Romans, Paul says this to us in chapter 8, verse 24 and 25. For we are saved by hope. But hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man seeth, what does he hope for? But we hope for that which is not. Then we do with patience wait for it. Kind of like, you know, not only wait for a Christmas gift or so, but we wait patiently for the Messiah. And so we can't, you know, just really in a few weeks go through all that, what hope means to us and all that. But we can look at some of the stuff. And so our hope is in Jesus. Amen. And our hope is, you know, that uh, not only is it uh, hope right now, it's hope everlasting. And he won't let us down. It's a hope that, that will take us the distance. And that's what I like about God. That he, he says, I am with you always, even into the end of the world, the end of time. And so he's always there with us. It's a hope that never going to let us down. And it can go the whole distance there with Jesus. And uh, it's one of those things that, you know, when, when the Bible uses the word hope, it's not something that could happen or maybe not happen. It's an assurance. So we can be assured that Jesus will take us the whole distance of time, all right? And so no matter when we're, if we're eight years old or 80 years old, he will take us the distance. Paul says this, I'm confident, and I like that word confident, you know, it, I mean, you just grab onto it. It's something that I can hold on to and never let go of. And I'm confident of this one thing, that he who has began a good work in me will see it to the end. Man, we, you know, Jesus will take you the distance. And I know all of us here are different ages and that. We can testify how God has been there with us throughout the, our time, you know, when we were young, when we were getting older, and now as we are in the, what they call the winter of our life, He's still there. And I love that about the Christmas story. Even though He starts as a little baby boy there in the manger, and then we see later on at the cross He's there, and then he promises us, even there in heaven. By the way, I just wanted to say this. You know when the Bible talks about Paul got to get a glimpse of heaven? You know in Corinthians where it talks about God gave him a glimpse of heaven there for a moment. And he says, uh, we can't believe what he saw or heard. I really believe one of the things he heard was her playing, uh, Oh Holy Night. Amen. Because that, to me, is what heaven's going to be like. And we're going to sound like. Something like that. Uh, you know, all of you are there, but I was up here watching. You wouldn't believe how many of you had your eyes closed listening to her playing there. And so think about that in heaven. There you are, the same thought. God gives us, I love how he gives us these glimpses of heaven. And one of those, that's why I actually played that, thank you, Judy, is another one of those little glimpses of what heaven's going to be like. You know, sitting there listening to great music, part of it will be and with your eyes closed. And, and you know what? No cholesterol, no 
No high blood pressure, no diabetes, no cancer, no work. There's no cancer in heaven. Isn't that wonderful? And all that, and you're sitting there listening to Oh Holy Night in perfect harmony with God, sipping on a nice Pepsi. Heaven, I'm telling you, heaven, George. That's, that's a glimpse you can get there. So here, here Paul and uh, Matthew both tell us in the scriptures that the hope that we have in Jesus will take us the distance. And if you're 8 or 80, he's still there. And that hope that we grab onto, that hope that Paul said that saved us, and that hope that, that will carry us through. And not only does it, uh, is it a hope that will take us a distance, it never disappoints us. Think about that. You know, we, we, we see things, and we ask God, why or why not? But one day I really believe God will explain all those whys and why nots to us. And we're going to sit there going, oh, now I see how that all worked out. All worked out for you. Think about that. Everything God does in your life and going through there, He's working in your life. Building upon what, what He wants you to be and what He's going to have you become. And, and so hope never will uh, disappoint you. It will go the distance. Paul says this, that you and I, uh, that hope uh, that we have now, it gives us that peace, and we're going to look at peace in a moment, but it gives us that peace of knowing that God is with us always. And that hope, he puts it another way, he goes, that Jesus being born in that, in that manger is our Gentiles' hope. That hope is we have a Savior. Not just the Jewish people or, or someone else, but us, those who our Gentiles, that's us. Now we have a hope and we have a Savior. So it won't disappoint. Then we come to Luke chapter 2. And no matter how many times you read Luke chapter 2 over and over the Christmas story, you read stuff and you, and, and, you, know, you still learn things about it. And in this week, we're looking at Christ as our peace. And there, Paul says in Romans 5 that you and I, now that we are saved and justified, we now have peace with God. How how encouraging that is, how comfortable that is, knowing when you lay down at night and you don't know if you're going to wake up in the morning or not, but you know this, that you have peace with God. And so when you have peace with God, we can say that, now I lay me down to sleep. I praise the Lord my soul to keep. If I should die before I wake, I praise the Lord my soul to take. That's peace with God. And so this week, uh, David and, and Vicki here uh, lit the candle of peace there and talked about it, Jesus being our peace. You know, there, there's three types of things about peace. First is world peace. You know, for those of us who, I, I don't usually watch it, but the, the Miss America things, the Miss America pageants, you know, they always ask those young ladies about a question, you know, a wish, and they would say, you know, the old story, well, we wish for world peace, right? Do what? Well, thank you, yeah. And then, how do they wait? Oh, thank you, Jessica. Thank you. Yeah. I knew she'd know that. And so, they would sit there in world peace. But look at the world today. What kind of peace will they give us? They're in darkness, the Bible tells us. But yet, here, here's some things that the world peace has given us. The peace of the world has given us. Crime, hate, the, the virus, <laughs> darkness. What else? These are the things the world can give you. But Jesus offers you real peace. Every day, man now is searching a way how to keep each other from, from killing each other and from having war with each other. And we still can't get world peace. I, I think I read an article where it says there's more, there's more worlds, wars going on between these countries now than there ever was. You know, and how can that be? I thought we were civilized. I thought we were, you know, we've gone beyond that. But yet, world peace is what they offer you. But here Jesus says, my peace I give unto you. The thing about peace is this. It doesn't start with the world. It starts with individuals. We first must get peace with God in our own hearts and then peace with one another. And then when we do that, we can get what Jesus says here. My peace I give unto you. And so this is what we're doing here this, this week here at Bethany is we're looking at, we want 
the God of hope and we want the God of peace. And in doing so, it must come from our own hearts. Here when, in Luke chapter 2, when, when the angels appear to the, the, the shepherds, it says, you know, glorify God and, 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 and hallelujah. And he brings peace on earth, goodwill toward men. And so this is the first time we truly kind of hear this. Because all through the Old Testament, it talks about they're seeking peace, but never find it. Or they get false peace, but now, the Bible tells us, now true peace has come to the world. And that true peace is Jesus. And he says, my peace I give unto you. In the world you will have tribulations. In the world you will have trials. But be of good cheer, I've overcome the world. My peace I give unto you. So this Christmas, this is what we're looking for. Sure, we hope for uh, some, maybe some gift or something to happen or someone to be here. But also, do we look for the peace of God in our life at this time of Christmas? Peace on earth, goodwill toward men. A lot of times when you watch war movies or if you read about the history of the war, of these war, the World War I, World War II, say that a couple times, you know, uh, you, you see those and they stop for a moment and they have what's called a little truce and they're sitting there singing Silent Night or playing that. They stop for a minute and they go, let's have a moment of peace here honoring Jesus' birth. And so here, here Matthew's telling us this, that the only true peace that ever can come is not through the world, but through the peace of God that only that he can bring to us. And here's a question for all of us for this Christmas. Do you have the peace of God? today in your life is it there do you know that if you should die tonight you know that the peace of god is there in your heart and it's there for in that hope that you have there is, is with god and so i pray to that for all of you that that peace is there and that hope is there that's what christmas is all about that's what it truly is it's all about grasping onto that hope and holding on to that peace of god that you know, he came to give us peace and hope. That we had never had it before, but now we have it. And he says, now we can hold on to that and, and grasp onto it. It says here that uh, individuals, uh, let's see. we must change ourselves first before we can see the peace of world peace. And so, uh, say that again, Jessica. World, what kind of peace? That's what we're looking for. But it comes only through the heart. Each of us first. So this Christmas, here, here, here's my gift list for, for y'all. Uh, I pray that you have hope. And I pray that you have the peace of God in your life. And in doing so, you're going to see that's when you can find the joy of God in your life. See, each of these, uh, these candles are based on, on a principle of God. First, we have our hope. Then we get the peace of God. And then we can really experience the joy of God and the love of God. Paul puts it this way. He says, grace be and peace be with you. You can't have peace with God until you know the grace of God. And so the grace of God comes through the hope of preparing your life and knowing Him. In doing so, we can have... Oh, we lost him. There you go. Thank you. The only way world peace can come is, is the peace of God in your heart. And if so, we tell others. The best part about Christmas really, isn't it? Is, is I love when my children are little, I love when, uh, your grandchildren or whatever, you get to tell them about the hope and the peace and the love of God. And you see it in their hearts. And, and, and you help as they understand as, their, as life goes through about about Jesus. And I want to read one more thing to you as we're closing. It's a little poem, I guess it's called. It's called The God of Hope. God of Hope who brought love into this world. Be the love that dwells between us. God of Hope who brought peace into this world. Be the peace that dwelleth between us. God of Hope who brought joy into this world. Be the joy that dwells between us. God of Hope the rock we stand upon, be the center, the focus of our lives, always and particularly this Advent season through Him who is our hope, 
our joy, our love, our peace, in union with the Holy Spirit, one God forever. And if we grab onto that God of hope, individually we will have peace and Say it, Jessica. World peace. World peace. That's the only way it comes. Jesus came in a manger to say this. I say, I bring you good tidings and peace on earth toward men. And the way we can have it, peace in your heart. Father, we come down. Help us, Lord, to have the hope that comes through knowing Jesus and having the peace. The only the peace that's truly is therefore being justified and knowing being saved and knowing Jesus we now have peace with God and doing so we can have peace with one another and Jesus says my peace I give unto you for you to give unto others help us Lord just this Christmas season this Advent time that we draw upon the hope of God and the peace of God in our lives and we show that this Advent season to others. In Jesus' name we ask. Amen. Amen. If you need to pray about anything, ask God about anything. We got a lot going. We got a lot of people ill. A lot of things going on here at our church. Remember tonight, be here what where? Three o'clock? Put out the bags, four o'clock to light, right? All that. And then uh, you know, if you get a moment down, if you just stop for a moment today before that, just pray that. You know, for all the families that's going to be here today. You know, some of them, first Christmas without that loved one or whatever, you know. And so just remember those families tonight. And, uh, and uh, I'm looking forward to a great time, a great service. All right, let's, 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 go ahead. Please stand and join in. There's something about that now. <laughs>
looking forward to it, uh, like David said, about the, even the chili, looking forward to that. But, uh, you know, just pray for the families tonight. All right? I know we're going to have a great service tonight. Father, we come now. Thank you for this day. Thank you for the music. Thank you for the laughter. Thank you for the prayers. Thank you for all things said and done. Lord, we just pray that you be with us tonight as we give you glory and just uh, help us have a great service tonight. And we just thank you for all things. And Lord, let us always remember it's always good to be a child of the Lord in the house of the Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And no rain. <laughs> no rain. No rain.